Oh, I gotta show you guys this one, this big apple snail. Now this one came from the wild. Oh my God. Oh my God, I can't even grab it. What's up guys, JJ here in the fish room. And I'm so excited about this video because I've never seen anything like it. We've been intentionally breeding snails and I have so many, like you wouldn't believe. I probably have about 20 fish tanks in here. And we've got snails in every tank, but like our main tank, I might have like a thousand, and that's not even an exaggeration. So we're gonna take a little tour, we're gonna talk about how to care for these guys, if you have some or you want some, and we're gonna see, oh my god, there's a spider on my foot. <laughs> so we're gonna take a look at a few of the tanks, give you guys a little tour of what we've got set up, and then I will show you guys the tank with literally, I think, a thousand snails in it, so don't go anywhere. So this is a tank I just set up to hold some extra plants the other day, but man, these plants are looking nice. I can't wait to uh, send them to some good homes. We gotta get them listed on the website. This 40 breeder I just set up to grow some extra plants and breed plecos in. Now my plecos are all the way on the back, but plants looking good. Snails looking good, eating up everything. Doing what snails do. We just hatched a clutch in this 10 gallon here which is a little small for that many snails, so I'm gonna have to start getting them out of there. And I'll probably take them to my outside tank. Yeah, so let's step outside before it gets too dark. I'm kind of shooting in the evening. Hopefully it works. So this tank right here is a 75 gallon that I use for some of my grow outs, and I just happen to have some goldfish that I can leave out here. So they stay out here too, and snails. As a matter of fact, we just got a new clutch of snail eggs right there. That's only been there a couple days. But check these guys out, they're so neat. Like look at this pretty brown one with the stripes. And it's right here with, this is a great color too. I don't like to pull them too hard, I hope it lets go. There we go. So this white one's pretty neat too. Got a little bit, a little hint of uh, a little hint of blue on it, and they're getting a little algae out here. This tank's in the sun all day, so they never go without some algae to eat. That's for sure. Oh, I gotta show you guys this one. This big apple snail. Now this one came from the wild. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't even grab it. It's like sucked on the edge so hard. But this thing is almost as big as my fist. Hold on. Now that's all big mama. It's about the size of a small person's fist. That's crazy. Except that was a quick look at what we have in the patio pond. It's not really a pond. I got rid of the uh, pool pond this year. But we've got a 75 gallon out here on the screen and patio. And everybody's healthy, doing good. And I know a lot of you guys, well, I don't know how many are still around, but a lot of people helped me name the betta fish in here. And nothing's really changed with this tank. Finn is doing well, looking healthy. And why not take a stop by this 75 gallon community tank too? They're ready to eat, look at them. Uh, let's feed them real quick. All right guys, here you go. So let's talk about caring for mystery snails and we're not gonna go like super full on care guide depth but I want to touch on some of the things that are important just in case anybody's keeping them or wants to keep them and that's why you found this video. So mystery snails are actually one of my favorite things to keep. I thought they'd be boring and who knew they'd move around as much as they do. Sometimes you see them climb to the top of the glass and dive bomb off and then they're always, well they're always active with each other as well, if you know what I mean. So they're always doing something. It's always something to look at. But if you're caring for mystery snails, 
They are a great way to get something in there, an algae eater that's not a big pleco, so you can keep them in a smaller tank. Yeah, in the same size tank you can keep a beta in, you can probably keep one mystery snail, and as you get bigger you can keep more of them. Um, if you're looking for what to feed them from the fish store, you can just get some bottom feeder pellets or some algae wafers. Actually, let me see if I have some. So anytime I'm at the pet store, I pick up something like this, and that's just fine. But you can also feed them vegetables. I know people who slice up cucumber and put it in the tank. I occasionally have extra coconut that I drop in there and I let them eat that. They will basically eat anything. Now one of the reasons I have them in every tank is because I have a lot of planted tanks. And I think there's a misconception that they eat plants. They really don't. They just kind of slide over and eat the algae off of them for the most part. But people who complain about the snails eating their plants probably have the plants dying anyway. So snails and shrimp too for that matter will eat on any of that dying plant life you have in your tank. So let's take a second to talk about breeding mystery snails and how they're different from most other snails. Um, most snails, like pond snails or ram's horn snails, are asexual and can reproduce on their own. So if you accidentally get one snail, uh, that could turn to you know, a dozen snails the next week and a hundred snails the week after that. And that's why a lot of times some of these snails become pests and they get a bad rep. Because other than that, they're actually great to have them in the tank. I mean, they eat algae. Um, they're good for the ecosystem. Honestly, besides eating algae off my plants, the other reason I like them is because, like, the snail castings, snail poop is really great for the roots down there at the bottom. So they really just are good for ecosystems. But mystery snails are unique because they actually don't reproduce asexually. You do need a male and a female mystery snail and they've got to do what they do and then you'll see the female come out of the water and she'll go up to the top of that glass and she'll start laying eggs which I have video of somewhere it's in a I did a short of it because I rarely catch them for as many eggs as I have in here but I did once and it was really cool to watch but they'll lay those eggs at the top of the tank just outside of the water and they'll stay there for about three weeks and start hatching so if you don't want a whole bunch of snails like me, then just take the eggs out. You can crush them up, feed them to your fish, you can throw them away. Well, you gotta be careful how you throw them away because you don't want them to get in your ecosystem like, like we have down in Florida where everything that's not supposed to grow here and survive here is. Bro, I go out the door and I'm fighting invasive frogs, lizards, I did a video where I caught cichlids in my front yard. I don't even have like a lake or a creek in my yard, bro. There was just cichlids in a puddle after the hurricane. So you gotta really be careful how you're disposing of your, uh, your plant life and anything for your aquariums because you don't want to mess up your local ecosystem. So let's take a look at these eggs here because we were talking about breeding. And like I said, they'll come just out of the water and they'll lay it above the line because the eggs have to stay dry. I mean, humidity helps, but if the eggs get wet, wet, they won't make it. So I've got clutches of eggs all around the rim of here, because we've got hundreds of snails going. And most of them have hatched already. Like you can see this one, they've hatched out, well, this one here is hatched out. I can't tell if these eggs here were just not viable, or if they're still waiting to hatch. But one of the indicators of whether or not your eggs are fertile, or the snail eggs are fertile, is they'll be like a really bright pink. If you see them pale or white, they're probably not gonna hatch. Now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, let me show you my main snail breeding tank that might literally have a thousand snails. <laughs> I haven't counted them, maybe I'll actually count them. Y'all, I actually broke a sweat counting snails, I'm not even joking. And if you're wondering why I have hundreds of snails lined up at the top of the water, it's because snails can actually be little protein skimmers. So they're up there trying to eat the film and debris that was hanging on the edge of the surface. But if your water parameters aren't good, they will actually try to escape. So you want to stay on top of your water changes and think about getting a lid. So if you found this video because you've been thinking about getting mystery snails, Go for it, they're pretty cool. And as a matter of fact, I sell them on my website, so you can just find the link in the description or in the comment section. 
and get them straight from me where you know they're good. So that's it for me guys, a little partial tour of the fish room today and hopefully you got some good information about mystery snails as well. And if this video was helpful for you, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next one.